This is a co-Atlantic city in Lagos, Nigeria. It is a city within a city, being built on a vast expanse of reclaimed land from the Atlantic Ocean around the Victoria Island shoreline. The project is a great example of partnership to transform land lost to erosion into a delightful ocean city. This city that originally started from an idea to build a sea wall to prevent the famous Bar Beach floods from claiming Lagos has eventually become the most audacious real estate project in Africa. And it will help to diversify the economy of Nigeria, to brand Lagos all over the world, and to create an enormous number of opportunities. The Eco-Atlantic City development has been termed by many as the Dubai of Africa, and upon completion, it will be home to over 250,000 people and create job opportunities for nearly 400,000 people. Today, an, a laboratory has been arrested and is being converted to a great asset of prosperity. It is within this great asset of prosperity that John Beecroft and his team at Tetra Manor Limited are constructing a 32-story building that would become the tallest skyscraper in Nigeria. Nigeria is a land of opportunity. I had the opportunity to visit the construction site where this mega structure is being built and I am happy to share with you in this video the entire workflow of building the tallest skyscraper in Nigeria at the prestigious Eco Atlantic City. You would hear directly from the various experts from different companies collaborating to build this masterpiece of a skyscraper called the TM High Gardens. Keep watching and you'll find out how much you need to have to own a piece of Eco Atlantic whether you prefer to buy a plot of land or an apartment. If you write in the comments that I should create a GoFundMe and you contribute to the milestone of $2 million so I can afford to patronize this young man, so maybe by then I would have a penthouse in Eco Atlantic. Yeah, nothing city. is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Hey, John. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing today? Yeah. Welcome to our site again. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah really so, the yeah. famous Eco Atlantic. Yeah. Let's get right into it. Okay. So, tell me, what is Tetra Manor doing here? First of all, let's, let's talk about Eco Atlantic. Eco Atlantic is probably the, I call it the best real estate destination in Africa. There is nothing to rival the goals, the plans that have been put in place for Eco Atlantic. And when I say Africa, I mean from South Africa down to the to Egypt, all across um, Africa. Um, it's a fully planned city. It's, fully integrated, fully self-sufficient. It is free trade zone and every amenity you can think of is there. Fiber optics, power, water, sewage treatment. The city has its own form of everything it manages itself. So by the time you go up, you are going to get the most amazing views. You wake up to the most amazing views of the Eco Atlantic. We had this vision to build the high rise because of course we had many of our clients who wanted something. And of course, our answer was still my guidance. This is for people who wanted something upscale not the typical um, middle class. We had a couple of clients who wanted more and this was our answer. TMI Gardens is going to be one of the tallest buildings in Nigeria. Mm. By the time we are done, it's going to be 30 floors of luxury premium real estate. Um, 30 floors of luxury premium real estate. Wow, guys. <laughs> amazing views of the Atlantic Ocean. With amazing views of the Atlantic Ocean. I need money. Yeah. I need yeah. money, guys. Any entrepreneur that intends to succeed must be ready to listen to the voices of their customers and adjust business demands to their needs. People wanted to own a piece of Eco Atlantic and Tetra Manor listened. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the board, there are some things that we are doing that are unique to um, EAC. Um, the, most, the most important thing is that we have, so most people do apartments. Okay. And if you go across Eco Atlantic, there are many apartments. When you say, I, I mean flats. Right? Yes. We are doing maison so basically like duplexes. Wow. So that's basically about over eighty percent of the units in TMI gardens are maison it. Whoa. Two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom maison So you have your downstairs and your upstairs. So mm. We are creating something um, different. You come back here in under four years time, you will see a thirty story icon here. And Just with the Atlantic view. Exactly. A tree cannot make a forest. For Tetra Manor to successfully build the TM High Gardens. It is only appropriate that they collaborate with other experts who have been in the business of delivering such high-profile projects and I have no doubt 
that the very best hands have been brought on board. The process of building a skyscraper may be similar to many other projects, but it is certainly not the same. It requires a lot of deliberate planning because for you to grow so tall, your roots must go really deep. Please introduce yourself and um, let's get to know you. Okay, um, uh, my name is Udu Jenima Padaka. I'm a structural engineer, also a foundation engineer. I'm the principal partner of uh, Pelamo Consulting, PAC. Basically, our expertise lie in deep foundation, particularly for this type of development, 30 floors. We're bringing our expertise in terms of foundation, deep foundation analysis, and soil structure interaction analysis. So to be able to model and simulate the behavior of the foundation system in accordance to the imposed load. Hmm. So in a nutshell, you need to compute and calculate the total level of load that the soil foundation can carry. And that requires you to do a lot of analysis, simulations and all that. Yeah. So in layman terms. Yeah, in layman terms, yeah, we have the superstructure, which is your building. Yes. Then it's going to be loaded on the soil. So we need to create a system that can safely bear the load. Mm. So that system involves a lot of calculation. The pre-calculation is so you have to determine the superstructural load, which was done by the structural engineers mm. on the project. So we took the load, then created a foundation system, simulated the idea of simulating it. You want to know the behavior before the fact. The TM High Gardens is a 32-story building with 30 floors above the ground and two basement floors. For a building that high, the foundation has to be really solid to carry the weight of all that load and that's where the structural engineers come in. The structural engineers put everything together to get the total weight of the building and obtain a value the soil engineers would use to determine the piling configuration that guarantees the overall safety of the substructure and the superstructure. We've been talking to a lot of experts who are building the Tetra Manor High Gardens skyscraper. We have three gentlemen here, so let's meet them. So, um, who are you and what's your affiliation with this project? Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Abbas Hamoud, we are FECO, we are uh, Foundation and Earthwork, doing the piling. This is uh, Engineer Mubarak, uh, Managing Director Engineer Tarek Noor, and I can leave the talk and technical to Mr. Tarek. Generally speaking, in a, in a very simple talking, you are talking about a high-rise building. A high-rise building is a factor of many loads. And you're talking also, we are dealing with the uh, soil. Soil is a kind of uh, uh, unknown issue. Even if you do certain investigations, you get parameters, you have a long, very long experience, still have surprises. Hmm. Not only in the soil itself, that the, the whole load of the structure should be carried by the end of the day over, over the subsoil. The subsoil itself has a certain behavior. This certain behavior has to be studied thoroughly. Uh, certain behavior against the load, certain behavior against the wind load, certain behaviors ag against all the different uh, uh, kind of aspects. So when we study this kind of, of, of deep foundations, we have to be certain over each and every elements we impose to the ground. How many years of experience do you have? 37 years. 37 years? Yes. And in general, like how many buildings have you constructed? Look, in, uh, in the Gulf area, in Dubai, and in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, I have, uh, I have done more than, uh, more than 35 uh, high-rise buildings. Wow. And over the years, uh, still my, the, those buildings are still standing. <laughs> wow. Fortunately. Wow. So, uh, yes, I have got uh, quite long. I am 37 years old right now. So, so I've been <laughs> <laughs> I was just born when you started working. Yes, so it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Experience is something money can never buy. It has to be earned with time. And 37 years is indeed a lot of time to become a subject matter expert in your chosen profession. I could tell how proud the man was when he talked about the number of projects he has safely completed. And I felt really inspired. Be it as it may, every project needs a project manager to marshal the entire troops together and achieve the project objectives. We have been talking to experts. These are experts and they are building a skyscraper. So let's ask you, introduce yeah. yourself first and okay. then you tell us what it takes to build a skyscraper. Yeah, 
My name is George Asaf, project manager in Al Mansour. I'm responsible of uh, TM High Garden project, which is the 32 floor, uh, two basement underground, you know, and we have three podium and 25 uh, up uh, floors. And you have more than 90 units. And uh, as you see, it's gonna be the tallest skyscraper in this region. My name is Olumi Deobashimo. I'm the project manager for Tetra Manor Limited. And I'm working with uh, George in making sure that the, the construction activities for this project um, is on time, according to budget, and um, within to meet the international standards of safety and stability that we are looking to achieve. So what was required of you guys to do to meet the standard to start building? To build a skyscraper, it's not different in any way from building any structure of any kind, except that it comes with its own peculiarity stronger foundation because you are going way deep down into the soil and then you have the superstructure that then is affected by wind as you may think if you just imagine that if you are moving and wind is blowing you can be blown off hmm. you know it's like saying your it, it trailer goes by you know the wind that comes the wind effect can throw something off and that's the same thing when you have a skyscraper there is so much wind activity all of that needs to be inculcated or taken into consideration when designing the entire structure so the meeting we had is to address the foundation issues with regards to the soil to make sure to just see the behavior of the piles some have been cast some are yet to be cast and then to see the results or the performance of the ones that have been cast relative to what the design was and to see how whether those designs have met the criteria for settlement and the international safety to make sure that this one of the tallest skyscrapers in this region remains for almost 50 70 years wow it's a privilege thank you very much thank I, you. I am thank you. i'm honored project managers for the project manager to be adjudged successful they must deliver timely with quality and within budgets but most importantly with safety this is no small responsibility for a big project such as this and i will be wishing them the very best of what it takes to succeed every day The family tradition of Almansor engineering, dating as far back as 1969, made me admire what they have going on, and I hope they keep sustaining it for many generations to come. I have a new set of guys, a new team, um, who we will be speaking to, and who will be telling us what it actually requires to build a skyscraper. So please, let's have an introduction, starting with you. Okay, I'm Wael Mansour, I'm the MD of uh, ALM, Al Mansour Engineering and Contracting, and we are a long, long time uh, old company in Nigeria, spanning like 50 years, and uh, we are present in all of uh, Lagos, uh, many, many parts of Nigeria, so... That's what we are. <laughs> 50 years, wow. 50 years, yeah. Okay, so I'll just ask um, both of them their names. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Karim Mansour. I'm the operations manager of uh, Al Mansour Contracting. And yeah, my name is Anas Shofi. I'm the general manager of Al Mansour Engineering and Contracting. Okay, before I ask them serious questions, you are Mansour as well. I am. You are Mansour as yes. well. So, are you related? He's my son, actually. He's your son? Yeah, so we go from generation to generation, on and on. We so have been builders for... <laughs> how, how, who started this, Almansur? My father started, your in, father? actually, in 1969. 1969, <laughs> and you MD now? Yes. He's operations manager. He will be MD. <laughs> and hopefully you'll be MD. And um, hopefully your son will be MD one day. Hopefully. Now, this was not planned, yes. but I need to ask something very, very important. How have you guys been able to pass the legacy from generation to generation? See, it starts from childhood. It starts from having, you know, my son on my back, going to sites back then. And this is how I was raised. I was thrown on sites, you know, when I was a kid. And uh, hopefully his son will be also in the next sites that we are doing. So it's a, it's a kind of a tradition. It's a legacy that we continue. Uh, you know, we are a family of engineers and we, we keep on going. I'm, so I'm super impressed. <laughs> I'm going to ask your son a question right yeah, in front of you now, <laughs> and I need him to answer honestly. Do you enjoy it? Um, enjoy it is a big word. So yes, I enjoy the process of seeing the company grow, but um, in the process, there are a lot of uh, hurdles that you go through as a company, as um, 
as a member of a team, uh, especially in construction. It's not an easy task at all, but yes, of course I enjoy it. Of course I see the legacy continuing and hopefully we can get it to another level uh, sooner or later. Let's leave the family conversations for now and talk technical um, matters. Yeah. So what are you doing here? What is your affiliation with Tetra Manor, okay. with this skyscraper? Tell us, please. Uh, we are the main contractors of uh, Tetra Manor. We also have uh, participated uh, from concept uh, design. We have done a lot, a lot of uh, participation. We have put all our efforts in the design itself. We have turned uh, the, the architecture, the mechanical, even the structural design for whoever uh, you know, is, is uh, conversant with structures uh, into uh, a piece of art. Kind of. So everything, uh, every element in Tetra Manor has become for us a piece of art to turn it into a, a legend of its own. Karim, being the operations manager, how do you run operations for your company? Um, so basically, um, I interact with um, all our sites all around, uh, mostly Eco EDI, even, even in other uh, parts of Nigeria. Uh, basically, all the problems come on my plate. So I'm a problem solver and um, I work with our teams, like our accounts teams, our procurement teams, our logistics teams, our uh, storage unit uh, teams. And in that way, I coordinate between those, um, those departments and the site itself, making a good link um, to, for things to run smoothly and for things to move as quickly as possible. A wise man once said that the best way to predict the future is for you to create it. Um, John, the wonderful projects you have here, and right now we are trying to understand what it takes to be a skyscraper. We've interacted with the guys who we are working with, from the guys doing your soil analysis, the construction guys, everybody. So, asking you now, what does it really take to build a skyscraper? Because it's an audacious move. Um, what does it take? It is not just capital. A lot of people have so much money, but they can't build a skyscraper. It's not just having a lot of staff. It's not just being about being smart. I think the, I think for me there are two ingredients. One is being able to conceptualize it, because you must be able to see the end from the beginning. So you be able to, able to conceptualize. But then maybe the second one might even be more important. The courage to actually start it. Getting about $3 million to buy the land first. $3 million yes. <laughs> to buy the land first. Um, so that, that's it. Once you get past that order, uh -huh. um, then you do your, um, you get, do your salt test. You do your salt test. Mm. Um, you get the results. At the same time, you are working on your design. Yes. Now the design process, in our own case, we have had to do so many iterations. And the whole design process to up to approval stage Took us about two years. Two years. About two whole years. By then, if I was doing a smaller project, I would have finished like two or three small projects. But that took my whole team two years to actually work with a lot of vendors and cost us hundreds of millions. Whoa. So right now we are doing the, the piling. First of all, this goes to about 29 centimeters the piles. Um, that's about 10. Yeah, about 10 stories deep down. Yeah. So basically, we have about 10 stories inside the ground. Hmm. But there will be so much concrete inside the ground as you see above the ground. Wow. So much has gone into it already. Wow. About 10 stories high. My interaction so far with John Bicroft and everyone building the TM High Gardens has further cemented my belief in how important it is to do what you have never done before if you really want to actualize what you have never achieved before. John Oluwafemi Bicroft is who he says he is. A man on a mission to deliver TM High Gardens, the tallest skyscraper in Nigeria, inside the prestigious Eco Atlantic City. I encourage you to follow his journey as he takes his company, Tetra Manor, to heights that couldn't have been imagined possible. And I am sure you would be inspired just like I have been. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Like this video and share it with everyone you know. Certainly, more amazing stories are coming your way if you stay tuned. You wouldn't want to miss what's coming next.